Hello, everybody. Uh, thank you for tuning in this week uh, for Houston Zoo's uh, Facebook Live. Uh, my name is Declan, and I am a member of the entomology department here at the Houston Zoo. Uh, we are celebrating Insect Week here, uh, and today we have a special treat for you. Uh, we have a few special guests here at the Bug House, so let's go take a look. So this is actually a very rare opportunity. Not too many get, people get to see this. Uh, this is going to be a Grant's Hercules beetle. Uh, these guys are going to be found in New Mexico and Arizona, but we do have the um, Eastern Hercules beetles. Uh, they're cousins that live right here in Houston. Now this is going to be, most of the time you will find these, you will find them in cocoons or shells, a lot like uh, caterpillars form cocoons and shells before they emerge as butterflies. So, and we can actually tell that this is a female because she doesn't have the horns that the males do. And if we take a look at right below, we can actually see its entire life cycle. So we have the mom that lays the eggs and when the eggs hatch, they become this and they burrow underground and they eat compost and dirt. And when they get up to a certain size, they're like, I'm ready to become an adult and they form a little cocoon made out of hard dirt and they molt and then they molt into their adult stage and when they do their final molt they will emerge as a beetle and actually the cool thing is is even though they're born they eat dirt when they emerge they eat soft fruits and vegetables uh, one of their favorite things to eat here is going to be the bananas and we have a question from Don is, what is the largest insect at the zoo? Um, that would most likely be our jungle mints. Uh, they can, they're gonna be our heaviest, but our longest is going to be our giant wingless phasmids. And then, so this is going to be the Grant Rance Hercules beetle. Uh, this is going to be our female. We can tell that because males will have a horn right here. Uh, and although this doesn't quite look like a beetle, when she, she molts her skin, she'll actually be very recognizable. Like, you'll be like, that's a beetle. Uh, but right now, uh, she's still kind of going through some changes right now. It's going to be a lot like uh, puberty. Uh, it's just going to be a very brief say. She's only going to be about this for maybe two or three more weeks, and then she's going to come out as an adult, and she's going to be coming out on exhibit, possibly. Um, we can't find these guys uh, here in Texas, but we do have their uh, cousins. We have the Eastern Hercules beetle. And we also uh, have another question from Heidi asking, do we name them? Uh, so generally, we tend to uh, not name them until they're generally uh, emerge as adults uh, because we generally can't sex them until they, you know, show us whether or not they're a boy or a girl. And so we're probably going to wait until she emerges and then we're probably going to name them. Uh, if anybody has any suggestions for names, you're more than welcome to put them in the comments. Uh, we will look over them later and decide then. And then we have another name for a uh, uh, question from Steven is, uh, this bug is probably gonna be just a little bit heavy. Uh, they're not gonna be the heaviest beetle. The heaviest one would be the uh, Goliath. Uh, and those guys can get pretty big. And the cool thing to know is that they're actually gonna be heavier in their uh, larval stage than they will as their adult because uh, when their uh, larva, it's going to be a type of, um, it's gonna be mostly dirt that they eat. So it's gonna be mostly like all the stuff that's just mixing around. They wanna get as big as possible so they can have all the energy to basically go through this. And then when they emerge as adults, they have their hard shell, so they don't have to worry too much about just being big, because they have their hard shell to protect themselves. However, what the females will do that's different than the males is they'll actually bury themselves a lot. So most of the time, you'll only see male beetles out roaming around. And then we have another question from Diamond. How many insect species are at the zoo? So, we're, so just in general, we have about uh, 40, 40 to 45 at any given time. Uh, occasionally we will get um, more in, but right now we're kind of just more 
trying to focus on just getting the number of uh, just getting the number of animal insects that we have up right now. Uh, that way we can get everybody out on exhibit, so that way we're ready to open. And actually, and let's move on to our next little fun little guy that we actually have out on exhibit right now. This is going to be our male giraffe stag beetle. Sorry about that. Okay, mister. Okay, and what he's doing right now is pretty normal. He's not quite sure what's going on. So he is going to be, you know, he's just not quite sure what's going on. He's just, you know, trying to figure out what are you doing? So this guy is going to be native to India and Indonesia, mostly in the tropical areas. And the cool thing to know about these guys is actually in Asia, they are kept as pets. Everybody has a dog and a cat, but over there they have beetles. And actually a lot of our information actually comes from hobbyists uh, over in Asia who are keeping beetles as pets. So a lot of say like um, our care and nurturing things is we learn from them and then we implement them here at the zoo. And right now what he's doing with his little antennas right now, they're gonna be little things wiggling around is he's just kind of feeling around like, what is this? And then we have another question from Stephanie, how many beetles do you have? So species wise, we have a wide range of beetles. Uh, we have the giraffe stags, the elephant beetles, the Grand Hercules beetle, the Eastern Hercules beetle, as well as the sunburst diving beetle, as well as the giant flower beetle, our rainbow stags, and our flower beetle. But at different times of the year, we might get more more beetles than others. Like right now, we just got a big, uh, big supply of beetles in, and we are ready to show them to the public. And as this guy, and these guys do not generally eat mealworms. Uh, this, these guys are going to be herbivores. So his actually his favorite food right now is going to be bananas. Cause, and this actually is a very cool thing because his little pinchers that you see on him are going to actually be his little mouth parts. So those are going to be what his mandibles used to be that grew out and basically become giant pinchers that he uses to fight other beetles. And this guy, he actually basically just licks his food. So just think about how you, how you eat ice cream. And beetles, they generally do have eyes. Uh, most beetles are herbivores, uh, so they have to have good eyesight to, bo to both see uh, predators as well as find their food. So actually, you, you can see the little round black orbs. Those are actually going to be its eyes. And most beetles actually have very good eyesight. They have. Uh, eyesight very similar to humans, uh, as in, like, they can see you and me right now. He's kind of just checking everybody out, making sure no one's doing anything he doesn't like, because if he, we did, he would make it very clear. Yeah. And actually, uh, and actually, these guys are partially flighted, uh, so they can uh, fly if they want to, although they are not likely to, because if we look at his little little thing right here, uh, we can actually see this is where his wings would be. Uh, they can't actually fully come out, so it's gonna be more like it's gonna like flap just very gently across the ground. And we call these giraffe stags, uh, Stephanie, uh, because of the long pinchers that they have. So if we look at, say, like our rainbow stag or uh, any other kind of stag beetle, they don't have as big, as long as pinchers, and these guys can actually be very quite long. Uh, some giraffe stags actually have pinchers as long as their body itself. So it can be very hard to, uh, it can be very hard to balance that. And we're going to put this little guy back so he can go and eat his little banana. And next we are going to be moving on. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. We're going to be putting him down, and we're going to be moving along to our next one. And this is going to be a Texan native. Uh, some of you may have seen one around. And this is going to be our little vinegaroon. And although I do say little, it's not nice. It's okay, big guy. Yeah, he is just going to be hanging out on here. This is going to be an arachnid. And this is actually going to be related to our tarantulas and scorpions. 
and you can actually probably tell it does look a bit like a scorpion but it doesn't have its tail and these guys are actually going to be again like i said earlier native to texas we can actually find them in the arid areas such as waco and the surrounding areas um, so you generally won't find too many here in houston uh, these guys, they get their names of vinegaroon uh, because they will squirt acetic acid, also known as vinegar, at their enemies because no one really wants to smell like vinegar. It is not a very pleasant smell overall. Um, and these guys actually will grab their prey. And this guy is actually very good for the environment because he loves to eat other insects. So right now he's just kind of trying to feeling around because he's not quite sure what's going on because it's been a while since he's been handled. And this guy, he doesn't actually have very good eyesight. So what he's doing is he's using his front legs a lot like antennas do with insects. He's just trying to be like, what's in front of me? Will I fall off? And then we have a question from Sabrina. Uh, these guys are going to be arachnids, so they have eight legs. Uh, it's just his front legs are modified to be more like feelers. Well, his other uh, three pairs of legs are going to be more used to just, you know, keep him upright. And basically what he'll do is he'll just wait for food to, you know, come by. What he really likes to eat are cockroaches, uh, millipedes, and other insects. And we have a question from Kate. And it is going to be more closely related to the scorpion. Because just like the uh, scorpion, these guys are arachnids. Um, and also like the scorpion, they actually have eyes on the top of their head. So their eyesight really isn't good because they're more taking a look at what is above me rather than what's in front of me. And that's actually a good reason why because they have giant pinchers right here. So if they... And these guys are not going to be dangerous. Uh, these guys are going to be... Uh, honestly, people are probably going to be more dangerous to them. Because these guys, the only thing they can really do is squirt uh, vinegar at you. Uh, however, these guys are actually very good uh, pest controls because they love to eat cockroaches as well as other fun little things that we find in our houses that we do not want there. And then the long tail is actually so it can directly spray uh, its vinegar. So this is actually, that's actually where the vinegar comes out. Yeah, and these guys, what we feed them here are going to be crickets. They love them crickets, uh, and what he will actually do is he will actually just basically grab it right in front of him. And then we have a question from Luke. Can they bite? Uh, they can. Anything with a mouth part can bite. Uh, however, he's not likely to. He's more likely to just spray me with vinegar and then run away. Uh, but that's just how they survive. And usually, like, when we first uh, got him in, from what I was told, uh, he was very uh, not happy and liked to spray people. Uh, but now, I mean, he's, he's a little older, and he's more used to, like, we're not going to hurt you. We're just going to feed you and occasionally take you out. And then Don asks, where did they come from? Uh, these guys are going to be a lo a found in Texas. They're not generally going to be found here in Houston. Uh, mostly because we are going to be too uh, humid and wet for them. So these guys prefer more dry and arid areas of Texas, but however, they can be found in New Mexico, Arizona, as well as parts of uh, Mexico itself. And apparently they can even be found in some of the grasslands around Florida because apparently it gets very uh, shrubbery up there, and that's what they like, very dry areas. Uh, you probably can in some areas. Uh, they do burrow, so you can't, you're probably more likely to find them in, say, like, remote areas of, say, like, farms. But again, you're not likely to find them here, uh, mostly because these guys are, don't really like the, the humidity and wet that you generally get here year-round in Houston. And let's put you back, a little stinger butt. Okay. He's okay. Okay, and here we're just going to put this back on top of him, just so he doesn't get out. And the next one, I'm going to have to put on gloves. And I'll tell you why in a reason. So this guy, he's going to be a stick insect. He is going to be a native of New Guinea. And let's see, where are you hiding? Yep, 
there we go. Okay. This guy is going to be a New Guinea walking stick. Uh, this is going to be one of our males. We can tell that because of the spurs that he has on his legs. Oh, it's okay, buddy. So if you look at his back legs, uh, he has little spurs on him that he uses to protect himself from uh, animals that want to eat him, uh, as well as to fight off other males. So he's very similar to, the, to male beetles in that regard. They always want to fight for their mate to both protect him from other animals that want to eat him. Um, although he is going to be smaller than the uh, females, he will still protect him. And, but that's pretty normal with um, stick insects. They will generally, females will be larger than males. And then these guys also have another name, the thorny devil sticks, mostly because they are covered in little thorny spines. And that's one of the reasons why we had to wear gloves. It's just because if the spines do get us, they do hurt. And they can dig into our skin, which can make it very difficult for us to uh, maneuver them if need be. And right now what he's doing is pretty normal. He's not quite sure what's going on. He's just checking everything out. Yeah, and these guys are going to be herbivores. Uh, they're going to be plant eaters. Their favorite plant here is going to be rose, which is most, most um, of our stick insects' uh, favorite food. However, he also likes ginger, turk tap. Uh, I have been pricked, uh, mostly is because we were moving them from one, one area to another. Um, however, most of the time they do not prick on purpose. It's more they're not quite sure what's going on. And right now he's just kind of checking out, not quite sure, looking for food. Yeah. And these guys actually are not very long lived. Uh, they only live about a year, year and a half. So this guy is about a year and a couple months right now. Now he's a little bit older than some of the others we have. So he's going to be a bit older. Uh, we generally house this guy in the back along with um, our other group. Uh, however, we do have some out on exhibit right now. Uh, they're going to be all full grown adults. And of course, they are like fully able to have babies. And actually, cool thing about the babies is they can actually live alongside with the parents as long as we provide them with enough food. And since we give them food almost every day because they eat everything we give them, uh, they are generally very well fed. And we have a question. Uh, we generally uh, have sick insects, what you would think of as stick insects, long, uh, cylindrical, and green. Generally, we don't get them this big here. Uh, we might get them maybe a little less. And then their eyesight is not as good as the beetle, but it's okay. Uh, you know, because of course, their main concern is just trying to find food. And right now, that's probably what he's trying to do. He's like, I'm not quite sure. I want to go up. Okay, we're going to... Yeah. And that's pretty normal. Their natural instinct is just to climb and to basically just see what exactly is going on. Because he thinks that anything and everything will try and eat him, which that's a pretty good survival strategy because then you're just, you know, always prepared for anything. And actually, this guy is very tasty, and that's actually one of the reasons why he has so many spines is because so many animals want to try and eat him. Yeah, he's just trying to climb up, just trying to see what's happening right now. Hey, Declan, Sabrina has a question. How long is this insect? Uh, this insect is going to be about 10 inches. Usually the female can get a little less than a foot. foot. However, their range as far as like adult width varies wildly depending on, you know, of course, how much they eat. Uh, at the point when they molt. Okay, and with that, unfortunately, uh, we did not have enough time to show you, unfortunately, all of the insects that we have here, because uh, that would require a few hours. <laughs> uh, but thank you very much for tuning in uh, for the Facebook Live. Uh, we're looking forward to seeing the guests uh, being able to enter into the bug house again, and we can't wait to show you all the cool uh, little guys that we have here for you.